coach, you're often pulled in a million different directions. You're trying to post social media graphics. You're trying to go live, make your website, show up on calls, and do all of the things. And so today, what I want to talk about is how you can avoid overwhelm as a coach and what you should do instead. So the first thing that you need to stop doing as a coach is stop comparing your business to everyone else. It's tempting when you're looking on social media and you see specific people doing podcasts and YouTubes and blogs and Clubhouse and all the things and you feel like you need to have your hand in all of those pots. But the truth is we don't really know what goes on behind the scene. They might have a social media manager. They might have someone running ads for them. They may have someone writing their blogs for them. They may have a content creator behind the scene. And nine times out of 10, they started just where you're at as well. So it's okay if you don't have your hands in all of the pot. In fact, in pots, in fact, I actually advise that you don't. Because when you pick one or two things that you really want to hone in and focus on, you can really put your best effort there instead of spreading yourself thin, trying to be everywhere and do everything for everyone. Step number two actually goes along with step number one, and that's to determine what's working and determine what's not, all right? For me, one thing that I regularly do is reflect on my business. So I'll look at different analytics to see what's working. I'll look up at different posts and see, do they like a quote post? Do they like a video? Do they like live? Do they like stories? And once I determine what's working, I lean into doing more of that. And if I determine that there's something that's not working, I determine if that's something that can be taken off my plate altogether. So this regular reflection allows you to lean in to determine what you need to do more of and what you need to do less of to ensure that your business is constantly moving in the direction of the success that you desire and deserve. Now, I want to add a little caveat, okay? Sometimes when people think like, oh, I'm going to reflect and see what's working and what's not, they think of like, well, I don't really like to send emails to my, my list, so I'm just not going to do it. Here's the thing. If you find something that's working and you don't really love to do it, we're going to move into step number three, which is to delegate. This is probably one of the best tips that you need to adopt if you want to avoid overwhelm as a coach. For me, I started delegating things long before I really had the money to delegate because I recognized that there were some things that were working super well in my business that I didn't really like so much. And so for me, I didn't want to totally stop doing them if I knew it wasn't was working, but I needed that support to make it happen. Also understanding that delegation is a sign of leadership. And sometimes we need to know where we have our strong suits and then we need to know where we have our weak points as well. I'll give you a very tangible example of this. When I was first starting my business, I felt like, oh my gosh, if I do all of the things, I can learn, I'll know what's behind the scene, I'll save money, all the things. So one thing that I tried to do was I tried to make my own website. And I YouTube University my way all the way through it, watched all the videos, tried all the things. Long story short, it took me two weeks and I still had a non-user friendly website. It was super ugly and I felt very defeated. Long story short, I ended up paying somebody to do that, which is probably what I should have done to begin with. Because the truth is, while I could delegate that to somebody and pay them to do that, and that's in their zone of genius, they're making money, they're having fun, they're enjoying it, and it comes out to be really functional and pretty. On the flip side, I can spend my hard-earned time doing activities that are actually going to generate money that I can't delegate, like going live or talking to my clients, that sort of thing. The truth is, you're not saving any money if you're wasting your time. And that's something that I think more entrepreneurs need to understand and adopt. And this is why we need to prioritize delegation because it will literally change the trajectory of your business when you get that support and you're unafraid to delegate what's necessary. Finally, the fourth tip to avoid overwhelm as an entrepreneur and as a coach is to automate. This is my favorite, my all-time favorite, because I'll be honest, right? When I first started my business, I wanted to have like, I wanted to be on the front end of every single thing. And what I came to learn very quickly, especially when I was balancing a nine to five in my business was I was exhausting myself trying to be everywhere and do everything. And so when I leaned back and realized that there's systems and processes in place to avoid burning out, avoid that overwhelm, I started to determine how I could incorporate those things into my business. So for example, one of the things that I used to do that I'm so grateful I don't do anymore is every single time someone wanted to schedule an appointment with me, whether it was a sales call, whether it was a client call, I would go back and forth and email. Oh, does this time work for you? No. Okay. What about this time? And I would spend five, 10, 20 minutes in total sending emails back and forth, trying to find a time that fit for both of us. 
Now I have an amazing scheduling link, Acuity, where I get to send them the scheduling link. My availability is linked on there and then they can schedule and then I get an alert and it makes it so seamless. A second thing I've begun to automate is some of my passive offers. So different courses that I offer in the background that maybe aren't like front and center or a new offer or a new course, I offer those in the background. So even though someone may be new to my funnel and they may not know about this, because I'm not talking about it, I have different funnels in my email system that invite them into that, that invite them into that next step. So even if I'm not working on the front end, if I'm sleeping, if I'm you know, taking my, my kids to school or I'm on vacation or whatever, I still have my funnels always working for me. And this is such an amazing concept that has really changed my, the game. It's really changed the game for me because it's allowed me, one, to make money in my sleep. It's allowed me to reduce my overwhelm. And it's allowed me to meet my clients exactly where they're at when needed. Despite everything you've heard, despite everything you've allowed yourself to, to believe, the truth is overwhelm is not some badge of honor that we have to wear as a coach. We can choose something different. You can be a coach that's still profitable and still impactful, even if you're not on the brink of burnout. If you're looking for more tools, more strategies, and more support on this journey to increasing your impact and your income as a coach, I have just the thing for you and I'm so excited. If you use the link below, you can get access to my totally free Get Your Next Paid Client Now bundle, where I walk you through the process to increase your income, your impact, your magnetism, and your success. So use that link below and I look forward to seeing you there. Until next time, check in and chat with you later.